I am really excited to introduce you to a project that LA County Fire has been working on for the last several months, and that is our Pixis system. The reason why Pixis is so exciting, Los Angeles County Fire has been a trailblazer in EMS dating back to the early 1970s when we were one of the first departments to introduce paramedics to the world. But over the last several years, we've fallen a little bit behind, and Pixis system is going to put us right back in the forefront. We are breaking new ground. While there are other departments out there that are using some automated drug systems, most of them have done so without the blessing of the state and federal authorities. We are going to be the first one to do so with the blessing of the DEA. We've been working with the Board of Pharmacy. We have a bill in the state assembly, and we've been working with our local EMS agency to bring this to you, to be out and open about what we're doing, and to do it on the scale that we're doing it. It really is unprecedented. Over the last several years, our country has gone into a, an opioid crisis. And with that opioid crisis, we have reached the point now where more people are dying across our country from drug overdoses than from car accidents. The level of scrutiny on controlled drugs is tighter than it has ever been. So as we transition from the, the county hospital's DEA licenses onto mine, it is really critical that we follow our processes and track every milligram of our controlled drugs from the time that we obtain it until the time it has been given to a patient. And everything must be documented very carefully and those documents must be maintained for a minimum of three years. So I ask you to please work with us to follow our procedures and policies to ensure that we have that level of accountability because it is my license on the line. Should we have a large scale diversion, meaning that we lose drug or that someone steals it or removes it, or we lose track of drugs that we're carrying through our department, it puts this entire program in jeopardy, which means all the departments that are hoping to follow us will have their programs put in jeopardy, and it also risks my personal DEA license and my ability to practice medicine. So there can be no workarounds. We need this policy followed. We do expect there to be suggestions coming from the field in ways to improve our program, so if you recognize something that we have missed, by all means, please communicate it back to the EMS Bureau, and we can make any needed changes to our policies and procedures. But there can be no workarounds. In order to bring this to you, we've been working for over a year with various partners to enable this to happen. We really are operating at the fringe of what current regulation allows, and it is absolutely essential that we follow our policies. Those policies are being looked at by local, state, and federal agencies, and by other departments that are hoping to follow in our footsteps. But if we find that our policies are not being followed and that we're doing workarounds, then it jeopardizes our entire system, and it also could violate the trust of these state and federal partners we've been working with that could make this forbidden for us and for future departments. The way that we're rolling out our PIXIS system is really unprecedented for two reasons. One is it's unprecedented on the scale that we're doing it. To have a system as large as ours handling more than 4 million people and 2,300 square miles, no department that is using automated systems has done so on this level of scale. The other thing that makes us unprecedented is we've been working with partners at the DEA, the State Board of Pharmacy, and with our local EMS agency to create this system. So, as we've been working on our project, we know we have a doomsday clock ticking on us because the county pharmacies are, will no longer supply drugs to us after July 1st of 2017 under their license. So we have been working very hard to try to identify every possible scenario under which the drugs could be used or could change hands. But we know that we're not going to think of everything. So we're counting on you in the field to recognize what we've missed, to shoot holes in our program, and we welcome any suggestions that come from the field for changes to how we operate. But that being said, as we roll out our policy, we need that policy to be followed. If you identify certain gaps that you think that we should fix, by all means, communicate those back up to us. This policy is going to be a living document, in particular for probably the first six months of our program until we work out a lot of the bugs. But we're counting on you, the end users, to identify those bugs for us and allow us to help fill those gaps in.